Welcome to Promicron Spike webinar today. Um, as you see in the first picture, in the first slide, um, we are not going to do uh, to have a live demonstration today because the main topic for today is the data interpretation and analysis of Spike Polar. So we don't want to show you how to use the system. Now we want to train you and to teach you a little bit how to read and how to interpret the spike data correctly. Today, it's me again, Leonard Riley, um, your speaker. And um, I'm the international um, um, team leader or, or the team leader for international sales. And I'm uh, supporting our partners worldwide in China, Japan, uh, South Korea, India, um, and um, I support the colleagues in the other English-speaking areas like USA or UK. Um, as you might have seen and hopefully understood now, um, this webinar session is to show you and to explain you which benefits you can get by using Spike, and the key benefit is cost saving. In the first webinar, we have shown you what Spike is and what are the benefits. Then we have introduced the new tool control center software to you. Today, we want to show you how to read the data correctly because the webinar afterwards, the block four, will be how to get the cost saving benefit in production by using Spike as a monitoring tool. And this is like how to do the project, uh, the bigger project, before you need to understand how to read the data. The fifth block will be how to, um, and we, where we, we will show you the user cases and we will uh, answer your key questions. I would like to introduce the third block to you a little bit more in detail um, with this meeting as well. It will be called uh, the DMAP. It's a digital marketplace. What's a digital marketplace? That's an online event along the machining value chain. And you see here some key players from the value chain in machining who will join this um, joint event to tell you about the trends and the, the requirements and the features of products and the value chain potential if we work together um, in digitalization. You are welcome to join that event in July. You will receive a special invitation um, soon. So, with this slide, I would start the presentation and to discuss with you a little bit why data interpretation can help you in cost saving. I think everyone agrees that Input mainly in production and the suppliers need to take care of these problems, we have following topics. Machine downtime. Sometimes we have too much rejects. The effort for quality check is mainly very high and mainly it is still a downstream check, so after production. We also, or many customers of us or the industry, has a high effort for documentation. And we are straight uh, right now, we are in the early stages um, of digitalization and of automation, Industry 4.0. That's why our goal is, and your goal is, to detect systematic and sporadic mistakes in production in order to get rid of bad surface quality or to make instable processes more stable. We need a quick process or product analysis and a problem solving solution. And we need to automate our documentation and we need to follow the trend of digitalization. How we can do that with Spike data is very interesting and very relevant because with Spike, we can monitor in process following issues like Asymmetric toolware, in, in, first I will explain you the milling uh, um, examples. Asymmetric toolware, symmetric toolware, 
for the end of two lifetime. Vibrations like chattering or chatter marks or even bad runout can be detected with spike and all these they will lead to bad surface qualities. In drilling we might have deflection, offset to the pre-drill, tool wear, um, bad run out and so on. All these points also lead to shape and uh, bad shape and position tolerances. They need to be monitored. Or you have sporadic mistakes like chip clamping, chip congestion, or if the chips are surrounded um, um, uh, around your tool uh, and blocking, uh, blocking your process, or sometimes you have a program mistake in it. Yeah? This leads to tool breakage and machine downtime. And if we can read now, or if you can read now, this, uh, these effects correctly, you can monitor them later and can reduce your costs. And how to do this, I would like to explain you today. I will start with an example. Um, some of you have already seen this example, but um, uh, some of you also not. That's why I will repeat it. This is the overview of a two life of two lifetime in a reaming operation, and you see that the average um, number of parts that can be manufactured with this in this process are 432 parts before or before the tool breaks. So 17.5% uh, in average. That's a problem that needs to be optimized. If we go now into production and do the calculation how much money we can save or we can opt uh, by optimizing the process how much money we can save here you can see this in in this example if we have uh, average breakage of 432 pieces um, the cost per, per component is 80 euros here downtime after breakage and 11 euros Saving with prevention of tool breakage is 90 euros and the tool cost per year are 4,500 euros. Yeah? All in all, if I summarize it and if I say I can detect now and can optimize the tool lifetime in this operation, we have, with Spike, we have the potential to save uh, 205,000 euros just on this process, just by using Spike in production with one operation. And if now the investment is lower than this, and if we can amortize the investment within one year, we really need to do that in order to help you to reduce the costs. But how to identify that, yeah, these low hanging fruits? This is an example from a customer here he is using a spike tool holder. He is producing these four parts, and he is using this kind of setup with the different tool holders to go from machine to machine for long time diagnosis. In the first step, we do process analysis, and in this reaming operation, we look at the feed force, which is now in blue. It looks like this. Then customer said my first problem is tool wear so right now he can only check the tool wear which you can be see here or here by after process if we collect now the spike data in process and and we analyze these effects then we can see that the feed force is two times bigger with the one tool than, uh, um, than the new tool and the torque will increase by three, uh, three times. The second problem is what he has detected with Spike is that his drill or the reamer is sometimes deflecting. Uh, these are sporadic mistakes. And by looking at the Spike data, we can identify that. And it looks like this. Here we go into the banding moment and uh, at the end of the bending moment uh, uh, at the operation, the tool will bend and the bending moment increases and in spike polar, we will get this circle. The third problem is that sometimes they have chip congestion yeah, in the last part and they don't get the chips out of the workpiece. 
that leads to tool breakage suddenly. So we were analyzing how does this look like with spike data and you can see here the effect that the tool broke immediately. But by looking more into detail in the operation we can see that before the talk had a jump uh, on a more on a higher level. This effect represents the congestion of the of the chips. So if we can detect that in mon uh, in production we can stop the machine before the tool breaks and before we create machine downtime. So, what's the agenda of this meeting for today, of this webinar? Um, first, I have shown you what's the potential of looking into spike data more in detail. Um, then, I would like to explain you quickly how to do a professional measurement I want to analyze some files with you in milling and in drilling. I will explain you the typical mistakes, which some of our customers already also, and sometimes I also do that in analysis, so it's a kind of training. And at the end, I would like to show you strategic benefits of spike data. So don't only compare this tool against this tool. You can do much more with the spike data, and this is the potential I would like to explain you in detail. So, how to set up a professional measurement? First of all, you need to charge the tool, uh, the spike system. Without battery, you cannot run the operation. So, um, if you plan a test trial the day after, um, um, take the tool holder, put it on the charger wire night and it will be fully charged afterwards. The second very important point is many of our customers or in production, they don't clean the tool holder perfectly. The cone and the flat surface at the machine interface really needs to be clean, yeah? free of oil and free of grease, um, because otherwise um, there will be chips and you can um, it can create um, runout mistakes. If you have the chip and spindle detection system from um, the machine tool builders, uh, which we also provide to them, you can see these effects automatically. But for your measurements, you need to take uh, to be sure that the tool holder is very clean. The clamping system where the tool is clamped should also be free of oil and grease, because if it's clean, you increase the clamping force. If there is still dirt in it, you will, um, the clamping force will be not as required. And sure, um, also clean the tool shaft. When we talk about the clamping, um, it is important or there are some tricks you can make your analysis more easily. For example, if you compare four fluted mills to each other, try to position one cutting edge always in the same direction on the tool holder. And on the tool holder, we have printed X and Y. So take, for example, the one cutting edge, the mo um, um, cutting edge number one, and point that out in X direction. When you change the tool with the second tool, you should also put the first cutting edge in this direction. In order to be able to compare tools as well in bending moment later on, make sure that you have the same tool length. No? If you don't have the same tool length because you want to compare a 10 millimeter tool with a 15 millimeter length tool, then it is important that you document the tool length. And um, there's also another trick to get a perfect uh, torque in your clamping by measuring while clamping your tool with a filter one by measuring the torque level, and if you reach the 50 newton meters, it depends on which tool holder you use. You can say, okay, yeah. Spike has measured the, the required torque, and now my tool is clamped perfectly. In the fourth step, I want you to mention the, the software. Yeah? Document the tool length and your process parameters. Fill out all relevant process parameters and conditions so you can remember what happened in your processes. And please start the measurement
by clicking on record after you have reached the required RPM, after you have turned on the cooling, and after you have clicked Terra you know, to set zero. Then you can click record. There's also another point which I forget to mention here. Make sure that the antenna um, is or that the receiver is in close direction to the spike holder and um, so you have a good signal strength. In the software, in the new one, we will show you the RSSI value. And if this is minus is um, or bigger than um, 74, uh, then you will have a good signal. Um, in the new software, um, we will, um, if you go with your mouse on this button, you will have this explanation. And if this signal is getting red, you will directly know, oh, I have bad condition. If you would like to have the Promicron or the Spike checklist for a professional setup, please send us a message and we can hand over um, you the download link or we can send you the document uh, which you can share then with your engineers as an introduction to say this is how you should prepare your measurement. Do you have any questions until now or do you want to add something, some difficulties which you have experienced in the past, for example. You can mention that now. If there are no questions right now, it's not a problem. You can place these questions also in the chat for later. I will have a look at that. Or you just send us an email and we will answer your questions directly. So now I would like to go into process analysis and analysis functions in milling with you. If you would like, um, when you are, uh, we will send you this presentation later on, and you will have here a YouTube link for a video which our sales, uh, our application engineer has done in the past, and it's a specific trial with video, and he will explain you different machining effects in, in this video. So, um, if you have time, you can have uh, a more detailed look into this video and train yourself. We have not enough time to go through that now because it's 10 minutes long. And uh, But via this link, you can have a look. How do the forces look like in milling? Here we have three colors, as you know. We have the blue graph, this is the actual force. We have the red graph, it's the torque. And we have the bending moment, the green graph behind it. In milling, torque and bending moment will always go positive. But in the blue graph, in this operation, goes negative, and in this milling operation, it goes positive. So we have a tension and a pressure um, a signal. What kind of tools are these? Um, the first data file, actual force, the blue graph goes negative. We know that it's an end mill because the tool is trying to pull on the tool holder and therefore the actual force goes down. This is because of the helix. What kind of tool do we have here? Here we have a face mill. In face milling, we can not only measure the torque and the bending moment, we can also see how much pressure do I have in Z direction into my spindle by looking at the actual force. And with, um, um, besides the absolute data, we also visualize the data with a spike polar. Here we have a four fluted end mill, and here we have a one, two, three, four, five, six fluted um, face mill. A typical mistake what many people do, um, while especially in the beginning of a measurement, is that they start the measurement before um, uh, in a situation when the tool holder and the condition, uh, the, the machining condition, are in different temperature levels. It happens. As you can see, it's not a problem because the force data will be affected a little bit in the beginning, but afterwards it should be pretty stable. 
it could be also the difference that it's stable in the beginning but at the end the tour holder is getting hotter and hotter and the force data will will drift yeah? we call this drift um, and temperature drift and um, the actual force uh, the blue graph is the most affected one so my advice to you is if you know that you have a process with high heat in it run the cooling a little bit longer before you start the measurement or even use cooling to have a stable condition in the force levels another typical mistake which many of our customers do is they want to measure the maximum force it's, and they want to calculate it um, out of the bending moment and uh, with the torque data or even the feed force. But as you know, we have in our software the standard filter of 100. It's a standard setup. If you calculate, I did this once um, with the bounds in the software, and if you calculate it, you get these values. But then I changed the filter to filter 1, so I was looking at the raw signal and I was calculating the maximum values again and what do you see? The values totally change and it's from 45 newton meters bending moment now to 67.3 newton meters. That's a huge difference. Yeah? And this is because we the filter is a moving average filter in order to visualize the process better. But if we talk about maximum force, please always calculate the maximum forces by using filter one. Another typical mistake is that we are not using the right tool, the tool holder for the right force sensitivity. That means sometimes customers want to they want to have one solution for all processes. And yes, it would be perfect if we have the solution, but this is not possible. Yeah? If you want to measure roughing operations, you have high volume of cut, um, volume of cut here, which you have on the Y axis. You have a high AP and a high AE, and the material is mostly very strong. So we have a higher value in X axis. That means if we have, for example, a volume of cut 140, and if we um, run in steel this operation, uh, it's 1,000, we are in the sensitiv sensitivity level of D. That means, and this is the benefit of our <laughs> uh, development and also in gaining experience in the tool holders, Promicron has developed different um, sensitivities for their tool holders. Yeah? So for this process requirement, we need a D tool holder. But if I want to use the same tool holder for a semi finishing operation in aluminium with very, very low forces, yeah, we are in area A. Um, and then the stiffness and the noise signal, the measuring range will be not precise enough um, with a D2 holder to detect these small forces. This is what you can see here, for example, or how to compare it here. You see the maximum load differences because of stiffness, and you see in the signal noise that the different sensitivities can measure different smallest forces. Here, for example, 0.6 Newton meter is the smallest force value we can detect. Yeah? But with a D2 holder, it's just 5.3 newton meters. I would like to show you this effect with the measurement file. These are the th same processes with a diameter 6 tool, three cutting edges, very small AP and a small AE and small rotations. Yeah? Um, so we are looking here at the banding moment of with the same um, process but different tool holder sensitivities while we have small forces and here you can see now the force noise ratio and this should be big enough one to two might be okay but three times higher is perf uh, is perfect um, but by having a more stiff tool holder you also see that the noise signal is much bigger 
my conclusion is if you have processes with small volume of cut and very uh, sensitive or um, soft material, forces are very low and therefore you need to pick a tool holder with sensitivity A or B and not C or D. Another mistake is which I have already mentioned is that you could miss a lot of information if you don't use the filter function. We are running here this operation. We see the actual force, bending moment and torque. If I use now, here we have used a filter 100. If I use a filter 1, so I, if I'm looking at the raw signal, then Spike visualizes me dynamic effects of the machining operation like vibrations. Yeah? And here you can see that the amplitude is getting bigger and we were able to hear that as well in that operation because the tool was more pulling and had to um, handle more load. So my message to you is um, in order to see dynamic effects Please also have a look with filter 1 and not only filter 100 or filter 1000 in your analysis. Now I would like to introduce and explain the spike polar in milling a little bit more in detail again. Many of you know spike polar, um, um, know spike polar, but not everyone is using it. It is such powerful, you need to use it. How does it work? We, we measure, or a spike shows the bending moment in two holder coordinates, not in machine or workpiece coordinates. Doesn't matter which system you are using, spike in spindle or spike mobile. If you push the tool in X direction, the forces will go in X direction in spike pull up. If we push in Y direction, it goes in Y direction. If I have now a finishing operation, for example, we will see forces acting on each cutting edge separately and we will get this star. So force, no force, force, no force. There are different influences on the spike polar design. Without any force level, in free uh, rotation, it looks like this. If you have a different AP or AE, depending on how much more acting points are um, on the cutting edges at the same time, you will get a cross or more like a flower or even nearly a, a circle. Depending on your numbers of, of uh, inserts, uh, you will also have see more cutting edges. Depending on your helix, on the angle of your helix, you will also have different force levels. And even imagine in tuchordial milling, you can see the forces on each cutting edge and you can see that the forces are not always hitting the tool at the same spot. The tool is really using its full range of the cutting edge. So a very good benefit. Besides the influences, several quality-related negative events in milling can be detected with spike polar. Asymmetric tool wear, symmetric tool wear, vibrations and even run-out mistakes. How they look like, I will show you now. Let's go into analysis vibration. This is a test we have done recently with a machine tool builder because he said, I want to monitor my machine and my processes for my customer, not only in R&D, but in production. And I have a double spindle. And they wanted to know which situations or process parameters affect the vibration on these spindles. You know this slide, and uh, this is the main overview of the relation between depth of cut and um, RPM. Yeah? So if you have a specific depth of cut and a specific a uh, RPM, you can be in an unstable process, so vibration or no vibration. 
we wanted to test that with spike and therefore we have used different spindle speeds and different volume of cuts. The result in bending moment can be seen like this. We have done these test files, red, green, orange and blue. And we have calculated the maximum bending moment and the amplitude in this area. And you can see it is always different. The amplitude is also a signal for these vibration um, um, issues. But by looking at the absolute forces in these graphs, the different the, the, uh, is not, cannot be seen very nicely. Uh, so to monitor vibrations by looking at that is also very difficult. But if we look at spike polar, you can see that with um, spindle speed 3000 or 2500, we have uh, um, a stable process, but when we increase the depth of cut um, um, uh, and the spindle speed where we are in an um, out of range, yeah, then we can see here that the spike polar shows vibration. The next file, uh, the next test will show you a similar effect. Here we have again different volume of cuts. So we have changed the AP. Yeah? And by just looking at the force values uh, at, at the graphs with filter 100, you only see the force difference. You cannot see the vibration effects, so dynamic effects. If you look at spike polar, which always shows filter 1, yeah, then you can directly see the differences and that you can see that the, um, process, the green process has the highest load, but also the biggest vibration. Now I have a question for you. Here we are seeing now an aerospace example. We are doing edge cutting with a very large 6 mm CFRP plate, 10 mm shaft tool. And my question, and we see here a new tool, and we see here the same tool worn out. I wanted to show you this picture because now we don't have a flower. Um, several cutting edges are acting at the same time. That's why spike polar is a circle. By checking the tool where we have analyzed that if you have double bending moment, yeah, in this case, you need to change the tool, uh, the tool because the tool is worn out. So spike data can help you to monitor tool load. But now we have done a special situation in this trial and we changed something. And I would like to ask you which effect can be seen here now. Vibration. Vibration. Very good as we have seen before. But now the question is, which kind of vibration and what's the, where does the vibration come from? From the tool, from tool wear, from the depth of cut, from the spindle speed? No, in this trial, we have analyzed the effects of clamping from these thin uh, CFRP plates. So by changing the clamping depth, we reduced the vibration effect. Yeah? In bending moment, we can see that. In torque, we were not able to see these effects. So here again, a benefit which can only be seen in CFRP machining with spike bending moment data, no other system, um, maybe vibration analysis systems, but they, they cannot be used in production so good. That's why uh, Spike is very good to monitor chattering or workpiece vibrations. I have another question. Here we have done now in um, automobile production in an R&D facility, we did a finishing operation with an end mill. We have different AP and different AE during these processes with, with these steps. Here we see spike polar in the center because we have no forces. But in section one and in this section, uh, in the other sections, we see that the spike polar is not in the center anymore. Which effect 
can be seen here? Uh, run out. Run out. A very good point. A very good point. And I, we proved this directly because the offset to the coordinative zero point, there is an offset in minus x direction in spike polar. There is an asymmetric action of cutting edges. So the forces, um, the cutting edge in minus x, minus y and plus y are getting more load than the cutting edge in you know, plus x direction. And therefore, we can even we have been even able to measure a six micron runout mistake. So this is a quality related effect. If you see a spike polar out of the center, you have a runout mistake and you produce bad quality. With spike, you can monitor that. Are there any questions or did you have difficulties in the past as well, similar like this? If you have questions on that, you can put it in the uh, chat and I will, um, I will answer them later. Now let's go into drilling and analysis of drilling operations. In this slide, you can see uh, eight drilling holes, which we have done. You see the blue graph again. It's the feed force in drilling. You see red, the torque limit, and you see green, the banding moment. What can you see directly in the beginning by looking at this data? Actual force and uh, so the feed force and the torque is stable, but you have different bending moment situations. So here, this is an incident. This effect shows you that you might have bad quality. But let's have a look later on that. First of all, we go into more in detail in one single operation, and I want to repeat the analysis or the measurement data in a drilling operation. Feed force goes up and stays on a limit and the drill goes out again. Very simple. Torque level, level goes up, stays on a, a specific value and goes down again. Also very nice to understand. But what is the peak in the bending moment in the beginning and why do I have a peak at the end? Here, the banding moment shows, if we understand now how the drill is getting into the material, we see that um, we have a kind of deflection in the beginning of the drill, but because one cutting edge is acting, more, uh, acting first and then the second one, but during the operation, it is stable again. After the process, when the tool is already out of the, pro uh, out of the drilling hole or getting out of the tool, there is still some a little bit vibration and bending it. Yeah? Mo maybe even these are the chips or something, something like this. What do I want to tell you with this? Have a look, also analyze the bending moment data after the process. Now I would like to compare the process to a bad process. Yeah? Here you can see easily blue, red and green blue, red, and green. The bending moment in this bad process, we have a deflection. So um, the tool is hitting the center correctly, but then making a curve. But by looking at actual force and torque, we see we cannot analyze this effect by looking at these force values. We really need to have a look at bending moment. My message to you is, don't forget to look at the bending moment data in drilling operations. This is a signal which tells you about quality. The others tell you about process stability. If we talk about monitoring, you probably know spindle motor systems. And you, we talk about what shall we do in monitoring. Huh? Process stability and quality. As I have just said, bending moment shows you effects on quality. The same here again with the operation. We have the actual force, we have the torque and we have the bending moment. And we have different conditions with centering, without centering, with an offset to the centering and with a 
tilting error. Can this effect be seen by spindle motor systems like Artis, Montronics, and so on as well? We tested it. We found, uh, these systems only measure the torque system like, sp like spike. Here you see the spindle torque and here you see the spike torque. These, these systems are focusing on process stability, tool breakage and so on. But the quality related issue cannot be detected. And here there is the key benefit of spike which you can add to even existing monitoring systems. Yeah? Spike bending moment can tell you about bad surface quality or bad parts. The torque, only if the tool broke or not. As you know from our um, um, recent presentations, Promicron also has the product Spike in Spindle developed together with the machine tool builders. This system can be bought from machine tool builders. Huh? It is similar to Spike Mobile. The only difference is Spike Mobile can be retrofitted on existing machines. Spike in Spindle is only available with new machines. Yeah. And right now, no one is buying new machines. That's why Spike Mobile is such powerful. You can retrofit it. Um, but Spike and Spindle can see the same effect. Yeah. You see the same torque, uh, the same banding moment effects um, um, in Spike Mobile and Spike and Spindle. Here we have uh, we have used uh, eight point two millimeter tool. Now we are using a two point five millimeter tool. And look at the data. Spike Mobile can still see these effects. Spike uh, torque data of Spike Mobile or Spindle Motor can even only see the process stability, but Spike in Spindle cannot detect these anymore. I will mention later a key point, a key benefit, which machine tool builders will do in the future, uh, which is related to this. I will come back to this uh, later. Okay, so the benefits of drilling is monitor shape and position tolerance. Don't only look at the actual force and the torque. Also, if you want to analyze and monitor the, uh, the quality, you need to look at the bending moment. Um, here, the single edge part can be detected. If you hit the alarm level, um, you will get a machine signal. But, and this is now my key message of the spike polar and drilling, with spike polar you can identify the reason why there is a bad problem more easily. Yeah? You remember this video which we have shown in the last operations in the PDF file which we will send to you, you can review that, but spike polar live and the bending moment in order to monitor your process. This slide should show you and summarize the key effects that can be visualized in Spike Polar. And I want to train you how Spike Polar is can be interpreted correctly in drilling. Yeah? Without forces, you have just a cloud in the center. If you have a perfect centric entry, the cloud will be still near the center. But if you have a deflection like in this picture, you will get a circle. With centering, it looks like this. Without centering, the drill tries to find its center and is, is deflecting a little bit. But what about shortening the pre-drill? You might remember our um, um, case study, which we have done in this in automotive, um, uh, in an automotive example, where we have not um, um, we did not skip the uh, pre-drill operation in order to reduce the process time. We just shortened the centering drilling operation in order to be more productive. Uh, and Spike Polar was able to show you that the, the quality is still good. If one cutting edge is worn, more worn out than the other one, uh, or if you have symmetric or unsymmetric wear, uh, one cutting edge will cut more from one side. That's why 
um, you will have this picture in the beginning of the operation and during the operation the spike polar will be out of the center. The drill will be um, the drilling hole will be centric yeah? or, or there will be no deflection but the drilling hole will be bigger because you had effects like tool wear or run out. Run out mistake in drilling looks exactly like this as well. Do you have any questions on, on this or did you have did you experience these situations before? Here we really need to think about our mass production because um, you don't want to check every single drilling hole. Huh? This is very cost intensive. Use spike to identify where the quality of the drilling holes is bad and you can directly um, identify it in process and you don't need to do the quality check afterwards. I would like to ask you about this case. It's from an automotive line production case. It's a drilling operation with a 60 cone surface drill. And as you can see here, uh, in this graph, we see the actual force, the torque and the bending moment. We see actual force, torque and the bending moment. This is two times the same operation. Here on the left side, we see repeated files from the bending moment. One file is special. It's the blue one. Here we have this big peak. When we look at the torque signal from a spindle monitoring system, we only see torque and this effect has not been seen. What do you think? What this, which effect can be seen here? It's a um, unsymmetric, or it's a um, it's a, not a repeating operation. As we uh, the the process is a line production process, but as you can see here, the problem happens suddenly, and it appears suddenly, and afterwards it is gone. Yeah? Um, so it's a sporadic mistake which needs to be monitored. What kind of mistake is that? This is chattering. This is a quick, um, I, I have done the test by myself and suddenly we were doing these several drilling operations and suddenly we had a high, a, 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 a high frequency sound yeah, of an operation, like a chattering and um, afterwards we looked at the workpiece and the surface quality was really bad because we had these chatter marks on it. But all the other operations, all the other parts were perfect. And this problem just happened once. This is a problem the end customer needs to monitor. Yeah? And because if this, um, uh, um, because of these reasons, the customer said every single part needs, to, needs a quality check afterwards. This is cost intensive and time intensive. Now, the customer is evaluating the cost saving potential and running Spike permanently as monitoring tool. And every time when, we, when um, he has the envelope curves or maximum limits, and every time when he hits this limit, the signal goes back to the machine and says, this workpiece which just has been machined um, has a uh, is broken throw it away so no waste of um, quality check time um, it's full automated and um, they don't need to throw away all the other parts as well what are the typical mistakes you can do with spike in spike analysis this is a quick summary of the points which I have presented to you during the last um, uh, minutes. The first point is that if you just consider purely on the known signals like actual force and torque, you will miss quality related issues which can be seen in the bending moment. So no consideration of bending moment and spike polar is a huge problem. If you don't do this, you will miss information. Message to you for uh, as training, 
always have a look at the banding moment and spike polar situation. A second big mistake you can do is that you don't look at the data, that you only look at your data with filter because it's the standard setup. In order to see dynamic effects like vibration, you need to change the filter to filter one or even sometimes to filter a thousand. Yeah? You need to play with it in order to see full effects and dynamic effects, which are relevant. The third point is, it's not such critical, but it's important. Maximum force calculation um, should always be done with filter one and not filter 100. Because with a, by using a filter, you, you are um, uh, you use a moving average filter and yet then you make the slope of the data um, smaller. The fourth point is the bad force signal ratio. Remember the tool holder sensitivities. Um, by looking at the filter one in your test files, you can also check by yourself if the tool holder is sensi sensitive enough to record, um, to detect uh, the forces which happen in the, in the operation. The noise force ratio needs to be um, big enough. Uh, if it's one to one, you cannot see it. One to two is difficult, but one to three should be seen very easily. My second message I, I told you about that before is machine tool builders like Grob, they will have or they already have spike in spindle on the market. You can buy new mesh Grob machines with spike in spindle. They will add in the future the information in the spindle systems, uh, in the spike and spindle uh, system, if the sensitivity of the in spindle is not big enough to detect the small forces. So then you directly know when I need to get a spike mobile tool holder to connect it with the existing system. The fifth problem is um, when to start the measurement. Click on start the measurement. Click the record button. But don't forget to turn on the cooling, to turn on the spindle speed, to wait a little bit, then press Terra and then start the operation. Yeah? Sometimes customers, I, I'm getting, sometimes I see in the test files, oh, they did not click Terra, or oh, there is still here no cooling on, and they start to compare maximum data without, the, uh, rec uh, without looking at the effect of cooling. Yeah? And as I said, the drift effects in the beginning or during the processes, um, uh, take care of that, use the right cooling, and if you know uh, the temperature difference will be high, then wait a little bit before you start your measurement. Any questions from now or any own experiences? Now, before we end with the meeting, I would like to show you some examples of customers uh, of, of, or of industry companies who use the spike data also in a strategic benefit. The first point is, for example, tool manufacturers. Tool manufacturers are using the spike worldwide and all the big tool manufacturers have it now. And they also have the Kistler table and so on, and they still try to compare these two systems with each other. The unique selling points for the spike holder is pretty clear. It can be used in production. It is the same system then to be used from R&D and production. It can be combined with spike and spindle. And if you are a tool manufacturer and you use spike, maybe your end customer is going to use spike and spindle in the future. So you need to speak the same language. And you want to give him information with your tools. Not only the optimum process parameters, but also customers or tool manufacturers are starting now to record the force limit or the force 
um, account for their tools. When is the tool worn out? Yeah? They can sh show it in the in the microscope with the tool wear, but they also add the information how much force level is that now. We spike. And this is an example where you, which we have done together with the Hoffman Group. Um, they started a customer service approach by these leading tool manufacturers. Others are also involved. They deliver tool and workpiece related spy KPIs for dynamic tool change. They use the tool analyzer software for that. Yeah? And here, this is a special case. We have used a new tool, a new mill. It was making good quality, the blue one. Here we see spike polar. Then we were using it until the end of two lifetime, the orange one. So the spike KPI will be red then. Here we, we know the maximum limit of the worn tool. But they said there are also sometimes in, uh, situations that one cutting edge is broken earlier than the whole tool so the surface quality will be bad. We have an unsymmetric wear, and this can be seen only in spike polar. Here you see the dark red one. One cutting edge is missing. In the absolute value in the graph, you cannot differentiate uh, between a normal one and uh, a new one, or even a broken cutting edge one. Yeah? So use spike data and the knowledge and transfer that information for a benefit for your end customers. And I can tell you something um, more strategically or more from the development. Tool manufacturers are also starting to sell their tools based on pay per use. Somehow, the use, the load of each single tool needs to be monitored. Spike can do that and help you to achieve new business models. A second strategic point is that there are different monitoring strategies. One, which you already know, also from other systems, are envelope curve monitoring situations. Yeah? You just put envelope curves around it, and if you hit it, signal back to the machine. With Spike, we are developing Spike KPIs like the symmetry or offset or run out or chattering like chatter KPIs. And these are a more detailed and more value um, um, knowledge which can be used now. Promicron is also already working on the next stages. Uh, we are working on using machine learning methods in order to detect drilling errors or machining errors at all um, automatically. So we don't need the expert anymore to analyze every single drilling hole. The machine can do it by itself. Here we did a case study. We see different, um, different labels uh, for, for drilling errors. And by using, by testing our Spike AI module and software, um, we were able to detect 95% of all trainings automatically that one of these problems happens. And by 69%, we were able to detect, or the software was able to detect by itself, which of these mistakes it was. Imagine a lubricant manufacturer, or imagine the fight between uh, on customer side, oh, the cause for this problem is your tool. No, it's the machine. No, it's the lubricant. No, it's this, this, this. We spike. We can detect that in the future, or we are working on that to detect this, the cause of the mistake automatically. Last example is that um, we are not just recording spike data and we can compare it later on. We are even working on the machine connection. And in specific projects, which we have done with Fraunhofer Institute and so on, we were combining the spike data with the machine data from the axis. Yeah? And with this, we were able to locate bad forces or the cutting forces directly on the position on the workpiece. 
This example is for BLISC manufacturing, high advanced precise measurement and now the customer or the, the institute in Promicron, we developed a solution that uh, we, can, we can combine these information and we can get rid of the quality check because we can see bad quality directly on the workpiece in 3D. So, thank you for, for having this, uh, for joining this webinar. Um, I want to, to summarize again. Um, sorry, it's in German. I missed that, that it's not in English, but it doesn't matter. Now we reach, we have done the third um, session for training you in data interpretation and you um, how to read this bipolar more professional. In the next weeks, starting next week, we will go into how Spike can help as monitoring tool to reduce your production costs. Then we will show you user cases. And in July, we will invite you for the joint online event. It's like an online exhibition with several parties from the value chain. Here again, a summary of all the companies which will join. We will have Hermes um, as a grinding wheel manufacturer. Haas machine, grinding machines will join. Um, the ISF will have, uh, will have a speech uh, about their development in digitalization, also in grinding. We have Stama. Um, as a machine tool builder who will present information how SPI can be connected to the machine control in order to have more professional monitoring setups. Um, we will talk about Spike AI, um, artificial intelligence. We will talk about Spike KPIs, uh, about smart tool holders with high performance uh, lubricants and even how Spike is used for training of machine in machining schools. You are welcome to join that event.